previously on We're the, the Campbells. I noticed that I'm left out. A lot of the guys like light skin girls. I don't think that's the case. You're light skin, so you don't really know how it feels. I had executives tell me, like, she's a little too dark skinned, we think. What? Is it meant for me? Do I stop trying? So you're gonna stop doing what you love because of what somebody said about your skin? I don't know, man. Bullies sometimes produce the best in you because you don't know how strong you are until you face something ugly. What did you learn from it? Not really let things like that bother you and to know who you are um, and not have somebody else have to validate you. Here I am considering leaving the industry because of someone's opinion about my skin tone, but what kind of message is that sending to my 13-year-old niece? Like Flexing in my complexion. All right. Excellent. I mean, she is Little Miss African America 2017. Stay up there. Stay up there. Don't let anybody pull you down, no matter what's going on in your life. Oh, moon and stars pray. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> So hearing Krista, who's 13, talk about skin tone and people's prejudices is putting me in an interesting mental space. I'm like, okay, I cannot give up on music because somebody doesn't think I'll be successful because of my skin tone. That's crazy. Um, so I've had experiences like being a singer and wanting to you know, be out there and stuff like that, people saying that I wouldn't be successful because of my skin tone. So. What I want to say to you is, because you're so amazing and so talented, make sure you always remind yourself of who you are in those, in those moments. Right. You're going to breathe in, but you're going to release it. And you're going to let it go. You know why? Because Come on, that's Auntie. Their... Come on, Auntie. No, <laughs> <laughs> no seriously. Because that, that's their issue with themselves. Right. Right. It's not Absolutely. personal to you, because right. you are amazing. I'm not saying that just because you're my niece. You're really legit amazing. You're fun, oh, yeah. you're cool, you know what I mean? You have a you have a great outlook thanks to your parents and the people around you that love you so much. Mm -hmm. So just continue because it starts here. Whatever you believe about yourself, that's Absolutely. what others will believe about Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the second you take in what somebody said about you and agree, mm -hmm. you're right. agreeing to be what they perceive about you. That's right. Never do that. Right. Because you're able to assess things and say, you know what? I'm a Campbell. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Krista talking about her skin tone and all that. It's like it's crazy, right? Yeah. I really don't want to go through none of that. But you know, it is what it is. I thought the world would be a little bit different, you know, now than right. when I was little and you were little, but yeah. I was in this frame of mind where I felt like I wanted to seriously leave the industry, but after hearing that, never. Good, good, good. That's what I like to hear. People told me multiple times that, you know, dark skin is not gonna be, you know, there's no pop stars, dark skin like that. Mm -hmm. But then I go, maybe not a lot of them, but remember Grace Jones? Absolutely. Yeah. One of the biggest pop stars ever. Or how about uh, Jennifer Hudson? She's not high yellow. How about Kelly Rowland? She's not high yellow. How about Angie Stone? She's not high yellow. How about on the film and television side? Whoopi Goldberg, Cicely Tyson, just Oprah Winfrey. I mean, come on, man. You know, the light, fair, the fairer skin people may be what you fancy right now. There's always somebody that'll come along and break that mold and you could be that person. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna venture to say I will be the person well, good. that breaks that mold and I'll just put that out there and lay that as a goal for myself. I like to hear that. The way I feel about my music, I definitely want to spend the rest of my life helping people feel less broken. I have to put my whole self into my music and like really yeah. reach people that, you know, are broken in areas like, like I don't care if it's their skin, I don't care if they're if, if their mental space, their spirit, like their heart broken, whatever. I have people that love me that have poured into me in a way that condition my mind to not see anything but success and not stop just because someone else is telling me that it can't happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
right. I, I, I want to set up a handshake like. I just gave you one. No, 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 no. I want the elaborate. I only have thing. Let me this, that. That's it. That's they all do that in a Disney movie. I need some more. Ah, that's what we do. I'm not giving you nothing else. Now get out of here. Such a jerk. It's kind of nice to sit out. What are you doing? I'm getting cute. Feel for a selfie. You don't got to get cute. Wait. You're already cute. And thank you for that compliment. I talked to uh, Juan. You did? And yeah, him and Lisa's coming out here. Oh, good. Yeah. Couple fun. Well, my awesome and incredible friends, the Winans, are coming in town. Juan and Lisa will be here, and we get to hang out, but I have a lot to do, so I have to figure out scheduling. I got to hang, I got to chill, I got to work. Y'all know how it goes. Man, I miss them. I wish they li they used to live right around the corner. Well, they moved back. I think he's really, really happy in D.C. Yeah. Uh, Go do a couple of double dates and yeah. hang out. <laughs> we can cook. Ooh. What? If I can get Lisa to make some pizza. <laughs> she is the pizza lady. Pizza lady. Late. I know she hates it, too. She didn't come out here to work. Me and Lisa have been friends for quite some time. We both were in groups. She was in a group called Out of Eden while I was in Mary Mary. We met years ago. And then she married some other friends, the Winans. And so uh, now we're couple friends. They'll be here soon. Oh, good. So we're going to hang out, hang out, hang out. You know how we do. <laughs> right. All night long. Dude, wait a minute. I do have to put some time into this book. Well, just figure it out. You work it out. I've been working on a book I'm really excited about, and so now that I'm home for a little while, I really need to put some time into this book. I sent the first chapter to my book agent, and I'm anxious to hear what he thinks. What is with the selfies all the time? Just say cheese. Cheese. You didn't smile at all. I am smiling. Can't stand you. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> How was the flight coming in? It was good, man. All good. It's longer than I thought it was, man. From DC? That is a little, it's a little bit longer. It's a little further. Our good friends Juan and Lisa Winans are back in town, and I miss them an awful lot. It's just really cool to have Juan in the studio and hanging out. We used to write songs every day and just kind of be, you know, it's good to have him uh, back in our space. What I want you guys to do is basically write just this beautiful, love song to God mm -hmm. in like Barbara Streisand and Disney mm -hmm. slash Trap 808 type of thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Juan is a crazy songwriter in his own right, but him and Lisa together write these amazing songs and they've decided to, to do an album and, and I'm definitely going to be a part of that. I'm going to help put some stuff together for them uh, on the production tip and um, I'm sure it's going to be great. How's so Man, all good. Your daughter-in-law is, is a boss. Good luck, Wozy. That's <laughs> good, man. He needs a boss. Yeah, that's, this is definitely going to be an arranged marriage. <laughs> Bruh, we joke all the time about uh, Sophie, which is Juan and Lisa's daughter, marrying Wozy. When it comes to that, I believe in arranged marriages. <laughs> so now I need him to have a boy so we can get Zaya together and bring this thing full circle. That's I, need I, this, I need this son, man. I'll get you one, man. What are you doing? I'm doing my part. Are you? <laughs> I, right, can listen, I can tell you how to get a son. Hey, man. I don't know if I want to know this. No, you want to know this. Say. You got to take cold showers. Because that sack needs to be cool. The male sperm swims slower than the female sperm, the faster. So you got to get yourself at a good angle to where you close enough to that thing. I don't want to be graphic and tell you the exact position, but you know. Nah, man. Nah, I can't. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> That's all bad. Oh my I'm gosh, saying. man. It no, worked. Man, no, come on. I'm telling you, it worked. I'm just letting you know right now. I knew it was going to take that left. I knew it was coming. <laughs> this is so nice. My new favorite area. Oh, this is so nice. Just two chairs. I don't need chairs for children. <laughs> I'm glad y'all made it out here. Oh, I love it. It is so good to see Lisa again. I love her. and. 
I don't get to see her very often because her and Juan moved to DC. It's a shame they moved far away because they have a sweet daughter named Sophie and she's like the same age as Zaya and uh, yeah, I wish they could play more. Listen, but Zaya need money to spend some DC time. I would love it. I would love it anytime. Oh. I love that girl. The two of them together, just, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Every now and again, I'll see a face from Zaya. Uh, that, what is that? What did your, <laughs> your eyebrow just do? Why what? did it do that? Because you, your eyebrows do it. <laughs> no, but tell me about the book. The book is called More Than Pretty. So More Than Pretty is my movement that I started about three years ago, and I started it because the church is missing out on a conversation. And the conversation is Christianity and sexuality. I am a few chapters in, okay. reflecting on the past, understanding who you are, the misconceptions that you have of what you're supposed to be like okay. as a Christian woman, yeah. you know what I mean? I've written two books before, both with Tina. This is way more hands-on. This is my first book by myself. God's given me something to say, and so I want to put it together very, very well so people receive it, so they learn and grow. With the book and the touring, and like, how do you find time? Jesus. <laughs> so I always go, all right, Holy Spirit, you gave me all this stuff to do. Give me the wisdom to balance and not lose my mind and still love the people and love what I have to do. Well, maybe when this is all over, uh, we can just move to Paris and just like, just, just live. Just live. Just live. live. Hello. Hey there, how are you? Good, good. Shane Norman is my book agent. He also goes to our church, California Worship Center, and he helped me get my book deal. Um, he's also very, very brilliant. So we're gonna walk through this process together. What does the publisher think? So listen, first of all, let me level set. They, uh -oh. they still are super, super excited, right? Okay. So the concept's great. It's just the quality of what they receive doesn't match the vision. Coming up on Where the Campbells. Chapter one of More Than Pretty. All right. Chapter one. What does the publisher think? The quality of what they receive doesn't match the vision. You know, it has to feel like it's you. Yeah, yeah. Talking, right? Yeah. So you remember when we started, when we, we actually sat down at the kitchen table, what I want to replicate is that fire that got this started. So we just need, I mean, we, got, we, we have work to do. Well, I guess that's not terrible news, but, you know, I mean, they're still on board. They're still excited about the book, yeah, so. That's, dude, that's the great news is you could, okay. you know, you okay. know we, we could be in a very different position than we're, than we're not. Um, I think we, we definitely need to look at, you know, maybe possibly moving the date. Oh, Lord. Okay. I was too busy. I was supposed to have some type of rough drive by now and I don't. And so Shane said, let's move the date, which doesn't feel good. It's not, a, I don't think it sets a good precedent with the, with the editor, but it is what it is. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Larry Whit. <laughs> What up? So um, you got some far, you say. What you got? Some what you got? What you got? Larry's Warren's engineer. He's also a songwriter. So he called me and was like, yo, I got this amazing song you have to hear. I think it'll be fire. And I think it'll be perfect for you. So are we about to see. Rodney sent over an idea. And Jay heard it. He liked it. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to flip this. So we want to play it for you. See what you thought. OK. You still in it? All right, here we go. I'll play it. One, two, three. I've been baptized in cocoa butter. I've been rubbed down in cocoa butter. In cocoa butter. That's what he was saying last night. Hey. Stretch marks on my heart. Uh, still, I got these stretch marks on my heart. Yeah. That's so that's fire. where the, the cocoa butter sentiment came from. So that's fire. What's up? I mean, if you feeling it, we can kind of like knock out the hook or whatever. And take it from there. Yeah, we can actually finish that joint while you're playing. Well, let's do that. Since I mean, since we're here, <laughs> like, might as well. I love the melody, I love the vibe, and I love the music. I'm feeling a lot of good vibes with this song, Cocoa Butter. I I've been baptized. Yeah. Okay. I've been baptized and cocoa butter. I've been rubbed down.
Mm. Has potential. <laughs> the lyrics are coming and the melody is coming and the story is coming together and you sit back and you listen to this creation and you're like, wow, that is fire. I was say this. Yeah, this is gonna be fire. Oh, this yeah. is gonna be fire. I feel it right here. Um, you wanna start stacking? Yeah. You're talking to me. You know, know you well, do you vocals like 80 times before you say I like it. I got it, I got it. I got it. It's gonna be fire though. No, it's gonna be dope. It's gonna be dope. I wanna finish this tonight. Well, let's do that. It's like really hard to get me to stop recording because I'm just obsessed with perfecting my songs, but thank God Larry's here to be like, okay, Joy, we got it. I wanna finish it tonight. Send it to Warren tonight. Play it for him. Actually, no, 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 no. I wanna surprise him and play it in the studio for him. Because I have a session with him anyway coming up. So oh, that'd be kind of dope. It's fire. Yeah. I got a good feeling about this one. Well, let's do it. Sister Bizza. Hey. How are you? Looks very businessy. I like it. The tea, croissant, business, phone, two phones. Oh, is that like it? an air phone of Warren phone? Is that I can't know? tell, Missy. Is this a little <laughs> hint of shade? No, I'm serious. It's Team Campbell, let's just say Team that. Team Campbell. Writing this book right now at this point in my life is kind of cuckoo ca -choo. I wish I could push the pause button on just one area, but I can't. Um, and I'm writing it by myself. So the book. Um, uh, we've been in the process, and I feel like I'm not where I need to be. My book agent, Shane, sent the first chapter over to the publisher, and um, they feel like it could be stronger. So now I have to move the date. But we don't know what time frame you're thinking. I never should have let them give me the time in the first place. I think they nor I realized that it was how much it would take. You know what I'm saying? Right. So. It never feels good when you have to push back a release date. This time it's a book, it's my first time, and I don't have what I need to have, and I'm not happy about it. So with the shift in gears, yeah. with the organizing and getting this book together, um, I gather notes and stuff from all the corners of my life, gather the notes and notebooks. I have been jotting notes for this book probably for the last two years. So I have notebooks and notebooks and notebooks, and I need to gather and sort, but you know, putting them in the right place. And so I was just, you know, looking at all the variables, you know, and like, you're with me all the time. You're administratively sound. So what I need is um, a little more uh, of your energy in helping structure and organize all this material. <laughs> you better sip that tea. <laughs> I totally understand where you're coming from. I understand the need. So I feel like I could put my journalism degree to use. Okay, so is this a yes? Is this a yes? This is a yes. <laughs> yes. We okay. gonna make it happen. My girl, come on. Coming, Coming up, up on, on We're the, the Campbells. Campbells. People don't know, but I lost a baby. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't really say anything to anybody else. It's like, okay, just, just keep going. We had the same thing. And I, I think, I, I don't think I really dealt with it. Really? I miss you guys. I need you to come back to California. This whole, I don't know how I feel about DC. You know, well, we, we can. Uh, I like DC, whatever. DC is awesome. And, you know, you just need to set up like the LA place and the DC place. And then we need a DC place and we'll be fine, huh? You know? So I've been working on my book, but my girl is in town and I need to take a break, take a moment. So we're just going to shop a little bit, hang out and chit chat. Love it, honey. Everybody needs to chill at some point in life. I want to I wanna be out here like this. <laughs> We could, we could sing for Jesus like this? Juan wishes he's so deprived. He would love, like, he think, he would think this is amazing. He should go on vacation mm -hmm. and, and just, just all out. shorts. Just nothing but shorts. Nothing but and shorts. A bikini top. <laughs> Let me, but, Listen, no, you'd be pregnant in moments. <laughs>
If we come back in nine months and I'm like, hashtag twins, I'm going to be like, hey, you're amazing. You're a prophet. You're amazing. You have friends and then you have friends. And Lisa's one of the few people that I can really, really open up to. Well, I feel like with me and Warren, because we tried for a boy and people don't know, but I lost a baby. I didn't know that. Yeah, I was pregnant and it was two, it was a tubal pregnancy. And yes. I went back and I was like, yes. And she was like, I'm sorry. And I was like, what do you mean I'm yeah. sorry? I didn't really say anything to anybody. I was just like, okay, just, just keep going. There's so many feelings that go along with having a miscarriage and it's not always easy to explain, but I do think that women should talk about it more because once a mom finds out she's having a baby, you fall in love with that baby before you even see it. And that's the hardest part, the process of falling out of love. That's a tough one when, because we had the same thing uh, two years after Soph. And I, I think, I, I don't think I really dealt with it. And then you find yourself four years later, you're still sad. Yeah. And you're like, I don't think I grieved this. Yeah. I, I saw like and a bunch of stuff. And you have to. Yeah, you have to. You have to. It's heartbreaking when you find out that somebody who wants a baby and wants new life and, you know, wants to create that with their husband, you know, has lost that, has lost a child. My sister just had twins. I know both of your sisters just both had of babies. My, they just had babies, boys. How do you feel? When I first found out, it, it definitely hurt. Really? And it wasn't that I wasn't happy, but it was just like, man, this is something that I've been praying for. Like, yeah. they, they have been praying for this. But then you see them, and you love them, and you hold them, yeah. and you know, you can find your joy. Yeah. But you have to kind of deal with it first. The I'm best done. thing you can do is be honest with yourself. You if gotta you... be honest. No, I'm fine. <laughs> I don't care. I've just been praying for twins for, I don't know, seven years. Absolutely. And... So she's sharing with me, and I'm sharing with her, and I think that's the beautiful thing about the bond that women have and the friendship that women have where sometimes you're low in spirit and there's nothing like a good girlfriend that can kind of help you come out of that. Usually I'm cheerleading everybody. Right. You can make it, hold on, you can right. make it. It's gonna be her, you know what I mean? I don't have a lot of people that do that for me. So I sincerely appreciate you. You're gonna make me cry. Me out here in front of the whole wide world. <laughs> I was like, I can never do door. it. I'm trying to shop. <laughs> hey, husband. Hey, baby. What you got? Chapter one of More Than Pretty. Well, let me see. Okay. All right. I have a few pages that I need Warren to take a look at and see how he feels. Just have to remember that he is not always kind with his assessments of the quality of my creativity. So we'll see what he says. Just, like, read it as the nice Warren. Can I? Coming up on We're the Campbells. I hope that this is the song he actually believes in. Isn't that song so good? Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. What was you thinking about when you wrote that? It's not great, it's not excellent. And that's secondary problem. First problem I have is, it sounds nothing like you. And what I'm looking for is the personality and none of that is reflected in this. I feel like it's just kind of rhetoric, empty rhetoric. I don't know, I don't want to like, you know, let you down or nothing like that. I'm just, you know, I'm gonna tell the truth. Well, you know, I'm totally new to the book world. So there's so much that I'm, um learning. Warren doesn't sugarcoat not one thing anytime ever. He's gonna give you the all the way truth, whether it hurts or not. You're a deep well, so you don't want to give him the stuff on the shallow water. Right. You want to go, right. go a little deeper. It's not autobiographical, but the, it is my truth, my story. Because you gotta understand that most of the people that buy your music, mm -hmm. they won't be the people reading this book. It'll be mostly the people that listen to you every day and hear you talk. When I read it, I, I thought to myself, I wanted to start w with, if I could talk to the eight-year-old Erica, if I, if I could talk See? to the 12-year-old Erica, I would tell her, you know, dot, dot, dot. Now that's good. 
Put that in there. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. You know, Warren is right. I do need to dig deeper. I can honestly say I didn't even realize that I was just saying things that I've said all the time. There's still a lot of me that people haven't seen and don't know. And there are other things that are a little deeper and require a little bit more. I remember when I was 12, we were um, living in Inglewood and um, I tried to kill myself. Kitchen. What do you mean you tried Something to kill yourself? Something was telling me to just slice your wrist in the kitchen. And you did it? No, I didn't. Wow, that's like, I've known my wife for 20 something years and we've been married for 17 years. It's crazy to me that, that I've, I've never heard that before. I heard that voice, but I thank God for the prayer that was going on in my house, because I knew not to do that. I, I mean, I'm sure now I know it was the enemy trying to take my life even as a young girl. But I don't think I've ever told anybody. I don't think I've shared that. Wow. I've... If that happened, that would change the trajectory of my life, you know? And it made me wonder, like, the, does my daughter or our kids have thoughts like that, you know? It's made me kind of think really seriously about just getting a better connection with my kids, making sure that I understand them and what they're going through. With that story you just told me, I need to feel that. I was captivated by that, and I just don't. You weren't captivated by this. That's not represented in these pages. OK. So I do need to dig deeper. I do need to make it better. I need to make it conversational. They need to pick up the book and feel like I'm talking to my girl, Erica. Like, they got to feel my heart. I got to find out what the publisher thinks. I got to find out what Shane thinks. And then... Shane hasn't seen this yet? I think he has, but we haven't talked about it. If he saw it and he didn't call you immediately, that probably means he don't like it. He's trying to figure out how to tell you he don't like it. But think about all of the the Grammy Award winning music that you made, right? Think about how many times you went back to the drawing board on that music. Yeah. This is not gonna be any different, you know. You want it to be excellent, so you, it's a rough draft. You go back and fix it. It's gonna take work, you know. Okay. Think about that, and if you gotta go on a little writing sabbatical, maybe take you and take Misty, you know, come, go on and dig as deep as you can. Okay. Dig a little deeper. Thank you, and, and thank you for being nice. Thank you, I appreciate <laughs> that. You can edit all my books. Mm. And my music. Mm -hmm. And my show. Mm. Hey, Carl. I am amazing, how are you? So, I'm about to play Cocoa Butter for Warren. I'm on edge because he is super critical, and I hope he loves it. I've been I hope that this is the song he actually believes in enough to really get behind. What is he gonna say about this song? I hope he loves it. Isn't that song so good? <laughs> Let me ask you this. Uh -huh. What was you thinking about when you wrote that? I'm wondering though, like, what does that mean to you? Like, what are you saying? What are you? What is the message you're really trying to convey to people? So, first of all, cocoa butter is a healing agent, right? And so you rubbing it on you to heal, but it don't never. It's not going to heal your heart and all the scars that you've had. You know what I'm saying? Like people use makeup or people use their clothes, or it's like everybody's masking. So in the essence, that's what the song is saying. I've, I've been baptized in it, I've been covered in it, but it still doesn't change Absolutely. the scars on my heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's good, I like that. Word? That song is really, really dope. Like, seriously. Thank you, bro. No, for real, like, that might be one of the best joints you did. Aww. I'm really proud of Joy for not allowing the negativity of these record execs to sway her. Because, honestly, it's a lot to get through. And it, it says a lot to me about how bad she really wants it. I love it, I, I just feel like kids like my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Can identify with that because, you know, we don't talk about it enough. There's definitely not a lot of songs about that. I think it needs to be a first single. Actually, we need to release this right away. What? He actually loves the song? What? With just, you know, putting the song out, be, be very aware 
and keep up with your fans and people that follow you, mm -hmm. people that make comments on them. I need you to mm -hmm. be active with these people. Yeah. Because this is a movement, you know what I'm saying? And so you gotta be on message and stay on message to keep the movement going. So next we need to think of a concept for the music video. That's so amazing. So 400 songs later, finally, he likes this one song that he's actually gonna put out. Hallelujah, yay. This is fantastic news. Yes. It could be better for our kids. Yeah. If you ever have any. Really? Really? Oh, I'm serious, man. I need some nieces and nephews. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what? Hello. Hey, how are you? I I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. So, uh, the book. Yeah, so we got, a, we got a lot of work to do. What we really need to focus on is hearing from other people. So after Shane's and my husband's lackluster response, I have to go back to square one. It's a lot of work ahead of me. So I'm suggesting as a, as a next step uh, that, we, that we really do a focus group. Coming up on We're the Campbells. So thank you all for being here tonight. Time for the test group. Take a moment, write your comments while I take a deep breath till you're finished. Come on, ladies, show me love. Sunshine. Right, I'm happy and nervous and excited and scared to be holding this. Yeah. Draft. So Shane called me and told me that the publishing company wants a focus group to kind of weigh in on my book before we go any further. I'm not so sure about how I feel about people reading the book before it's ready. It's like hearing a song before it's finished. It's not finished. And I'm excited about revamping it and making sure it's what it needs to be. So the focus group that you were talking about. The, the idea is to pull in some people who are, you know, completely objective. You know this from being an artist that the real world is tough. Want to get uh, yeah. some objective outside opinions and, and hear what they have to say and see if that informs our path. Well, this makes me nervous because I've never done a focus group before, but I trust Shane knows what he's doing. Well, I'll let uh, Pastor read the first chapter and um, his first thing was, it doesn't sound like you. Exactly. And so I was hanging out with my girlfriend who came in town, um, Lisa, and we were just going through some things and I was like, this needs to be what the book feels like. Right. Like I'm, you know, talking to my girls, my friends, my aunts, my sisters. And I think this is an exploration of, again, um, when something's so, so close to you, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, this is great. Well, let's go back to the, the to the draft and to the outline um, mm -hmm. and just uh, let's, you know, adjust it to the new vision, Got sort it. of. I think you're gonna have to get like a substantial amount done mm -hmm. so that we have an, right. enough for them to, to review. Like yeah. right now, you wouldn't want them to right, review right. like what, we, what we've got so far. And yeah, I think the milestone should be immediately, you know, chapters one and chapters two. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've got a lot of work to do and a focus group to get ready for. I am nervous and excited, but mostly nervous. So if this focus group don't happen, then what? It's gonna happen. Yeah, no, rest assured it'll happen. Okay. All right, go team. Baby, baby, you gonna bring your hand. Jesus! So it's been so much fun having Juan and Lisa here for the week. Love, love, love them, but we can't let her leave without making pizza. She's a pizza lady. I have this goddaughter down in Dallas. She was at church, and the pastor was up telling people, don't buy Mary Mary, because we're worldly, because we wear pants. What? Pants, yeah. still? And lipstick. Some people still care about that. How did y'all wow. do that in the very beginning? Because in the beginning, it's like you want people to like you. You right. want people to kind of. I think in the beginning, we were just so happy and young and so just, yeah. this was, is going to be, we know, didn't think about any of that. It yeah. wasn't no like, social media like that. It was that, that, that dollar, that long time. You know, 
know when you're in a big family, they tell oh. you off all the time, so yeah. you get tough your skin. Your skin is real thick. Some artists, you tell them you don't like their outfit or their song, they crumble and yeah. they can't do it anymore. Like, it really becomes paralyzing for some people. Maybe I should put this type of stuff in the book. It's not easy to please everyone. Listen, somebody's always gonna have a problem with you. It's called thick skin and you need to have it. So how did the whiners deal with it? I know they came under fire. My grandfather never cared. He told but they were kind of churchy though. Yeah, but my, my dad has told me stories about the church he grew up in and the people saying, God can't bless y'all because y'all music ain't, it ain't holy. Mm. Oh. I'm in no way afraid of offending the church when it comes to this book. I serve God and not you. So what, what's in this thing here? This one, this is a homemade tomato sauce. <laughs> uh-huh. Pizza lady. <laughs> I, hate, I hate it. I hate it and I love it. This <laughs> This is, yeah. This one's all cheese. So oh, there's no tomato on. sauce? No tomato sauce. Warren, what are you doing? You are... No, don't make it messy. I do it like I play dice. Oh, God. Warren! <laughs> <laughs> you better sweep, too. <laughs> <laughs> I will hand. Yeah, I think we are no. good. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. Pr we didn't pray. Who's praying? Come on, pass. <laughs> Father, we thank you for the food and certainly the fellowship. We ask uh -huh. that you bless them both and Man. put a special, God. unusual blessing on the pizza lady. Pizza lady. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We miss y'all. We do. Listen. Come back. The best. You guys are recording an album, right? You got to come to the studio and I got to work with well, you. Well, then I have to right. we'll be back. There you go. Ah, back to DC they go. Bye, I, friends. I hate DC. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hate DC. We love DC. I hate DC. I love because, you, DC. Because they have Lisa and Juan. Well, how about we just go visit them? Let's go to DC. Well, Find come you. on. <laughs> Heal him. Jesus, in Jesus name. Quickly. There you go. <laughs> That's amazing. Woo! So thank you all for being here tonight. All right, the time is here. Time for the test group. The name of the book is More Than Pretty. I won't beg y'all to be nice. I just want you to be really honest. All right, here goes. So thank you all for being here tonight. The name of the book is More Than Pretty. All right, the time is here. Time for the test group. I won't beg y'all to be nice. I just want you to be really honest. All right, here goes. Imagine I've been invited to speak or sing at an event and the host starts to read my bio. Not that the bio is not true, but there is so much more to me. At some point in my life, I realized I was much more than some little church girl from Inglewood. I was born to impact the world. I don't know if they're quiet because they're listening. Are they quiet because they'd rather leave? I don't know why they're so quiet, but I need them to say somebody say something, amen or something. Yeah, girl, somebody please speak up, ladies. Oh, God. This book is all about reflection and correction. To do so, we must look at all the different mirrors in our life. Not every reflection is an accurate one. True reflection is about looking at the real you and in the end, liking, appreciating, valuing, and loving what you see. That is chapter one. Um, take a moment, reflect, and write your comments while I take a deep breath or maybe hold my breath till you're finished. <laughs> okay, two more minutes, students, and pencils down. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a lot of notes, ladies. It's a lot of notes. It's is it good stuff? Is it bad stuff? Oh, God, can I please see it before you send it to the publisher? Thank you. You can just close that. OK, thank you. I had the results from the focus group. You ready? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I have not heard one word since the focus group, so I am anxious to hear if they liked it, if they loved it, if they hated it. Go easy on me, Misty, go easy. 95% of respondents were interested in hearing more of your point of view on self-worth. And there's some quotes. I will buy a copy for myself and others. Ooh. This book seems like a great addition to my arsenal of motivational material. And uh, 
It will help me overcome battles I faced. Oh, for real? Now that wasn't all from my mama, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. They loved it. Yes. Mm, mm. Thank you, Misty. Thank you, Shane. Actually, Shane just sent me a note saying that the publishers are moving forward based on the info from the test group. Yes! So. <laughs> Come on, more than pretty! Next on, we're, we're the, the Campbells. Campbells. Can we have our parties together? We never had our birthday parties together. All right. What type of style of clothing are you thinking? I just want to make sure it's not like sell sex. My niece is watching, so. We got to figure that out. We're going to have to show some skin. 